Live from London, this is BBC News. In a public conversation plagued by technical problems, Donald Trump and Elon Musk discuss everything from global warming to the assassination attempt. I also heard people shout bullets, bullets, uh, you know, get down, get down, because I, you know, I moved down pretty nicely, pretty quickly, and we had bullets flying right over my head after I went down, so I'm glad I went down. Self-obsessed rich guys. That's the response from the Harris campaign to the pair's conversation. Firefighters and soldiers battle the flames in Greece around the capital Athens. A man appears in court charged with attempted murder after an 11-year-old girl was stabbed in London's Leicester Square. Scientists identify liquid water on Mars thanks to new data from a NASA probe. Hello, I'm Lucy Hawkins. Welcome to BBC News Now. Three hours of fast-moving news, interviews and reaction. It was a conversation delayed by technical problems, but the world's richest man eventually had a two-hour public chat with former US President Donald Trump. It was broadcast on Mr Musk's social media platform X. The discussion, not on camera, touched on immigration, global politics and much more. Mr Trump also said his attempted assassination now made him more of a believer in God and was sharply critical of his presidential rival Kamala Harris. Hugo, thank you so much. And since we've been speaking, Hugo mentioning that the Biden administration very much believes a ceasefire in Gaza that frees Israeli hostages is going to be the best way to calm tensions in the region. The Reuters news agency is now reporting as well. Iranian sources saying that a permanent Gaza ceasefire could delay their retaliation against Israel. So uh, that is the latest coming to us from the Reuters news agency. Still to come on BBC News Now. Indian doctors walk off the job after the murder of a colleague. They want a safer workspace and their strike is spreading across the country. Do stay with us. Here in the UK, a 32-year-old man has appeared in court charged with attempted murder and possession of a knife after an 11-year-old girl was stabbed in London's Leicester Square yesterday. We're joined now by our correspondent Nick Johnson who is outside Westminster Magistrates Court. What's happened today, Nick? We have a small piece of breaking news to bring you from here in the UK about the momentum and the diplomacy around ceasefire talks in Gaza. Uh, the UK's Foreign Secretary, David Lammy, we understand has just spoken to the Lebanese Prime Minister this morning. Prime Minister Makati has been uh, talking to him about de-escalating tensions in the region. The UK government saying it is very much focused on a diplomatic solution based around a UN security resolution that is 1701. And you will know from our conversation earlier in the program with Hugo Bachega that this follows Sukhir Starmer, the Prime Minister, speaking to Iran's president on the phone as well. More on all of that coming up. Do stay with us on BBC News. This is BBC News, the headlines. In a public conversation plagued by technical problems, Donald Trump and Elon Musk discuss everything from global warming to the assassination attempt. Ukraine says it's not interested in keeping territory in the Kursk region as its counter-incursion into Russian territory continues. A BBC investigation finds that a priest in Blackburn who was assessed as a potential risk to children was given a six-figure payoff by the Church of England. Banksy unveils his ninth animal artwork in as many days, this time at London Zoo. Hello, I'm Lucy Hawkins. Welcome to BBC News Now. Ukraine and Russia have been attacking each other overnight, a week into Ukrainian, Ukraine's incursion into the Russian border region of Kursk. The Defence Ministry in Moscow says its air defence units have destroyed 12 drones over Kursk and one each over uh, Belgorod and Vorozhny. Ukraine's military says it shot down 30 Russian drones and two missiles. Russian war bloggers report continuing battles in Kursk as well. They say Kyiv's forces are trying to expand their control but are being met by reinforcements sent by the Kremlin. We're streeting there. Around the world and across the UK, this is BBC News. 
Welcome back. Here in the UK, a BBC investigation has found that a priest in Blackburn who was assessed as a potential risk to children and young people was given a six-figure payoff by the Church of England. Canon Andrew Hindley was subject to five police investigations, including into allegations of sexual assault, but wasn't charged. He has always strongly denied any wrongdoing. Our religion editor, Aline Muckwell, reports. Absolutely fascinating. Now, here in the UK, we have been treated to some incredible night skies. And if you'd like to look at some wonderful pictures sent to us by our viewers, do go to the BBC News website to the weather page, where you can see the northern lights seen right across the UK, but it also coincided for a second night with a meteor shower. So some lovely pictures there on the website. Do log on and take them. See you in a few minutes. Live from London, this is BBC News. In a public conversation plagued by technical problems, Donald Trump and Elon Musk discuss everything from global warming to the assassination attempt. I also heard people shout, bullets, bullets, uh, you know, get down, get down, because I, you know, I moved down pretty nicely, pretty quickly. Self-obsessed rich guys, that's the response from the Harris campaign to the Payers conversation. Firefighters and soldiers battle the flames in Greece around the capital Athens. UK's Prime Minister Keir Starmer urges Iran not to attack Israel in a phone call with Iran's new president. And scientists identify liquid water on Mars thanks to a new set of data from a NASA probe. Hello, I'm Lucy Hawkins. Welcome to BBC News Now. Three hours of fast-moving news, interviews and reaction. It was a conversation delayed by technical problems, but the world's richest man eventually had a two-hour public chat with former U.S. President Donald Trump. It was broadcast on Mr. Musk's social media platform X. The discussion, which was not on camera, touched on immigration, global politics and much more. Mr. Trump also said his attempted assassination now made him more of a believer in God and was sharply critical of his presidential rival Kamala Harris. Stay with us, coming up on BBC News Now, Indian doctors walk off the job after the murder of a colleague. They want a safer workplace and their strike is spreading across the country. Stay with us. Welcome back. Ukraine's President Zelensky says war is coming home to Russia as Ukraine continues its offensive. The country's foreign ministry warns that the sooner Russia agrees peace, the sooner the raid by Ukrainian forces will stop. And in Moscow, the defense ministry says it's been successfully pushing back against the incursion into its territory. Berlin Zoo has announced that one of its giant pandas is pregnant again, months after her previous cubs were sent to China. There were celebrations when Meng Meng gave birth to Germany's first ever pandas in 2019. The twins taken away though in December under an agreement with Beijing. China, remember, loans the animals to other countries as part of a policy known as panda diplomacy. This is BBC News, the headlines. In a public conversation plagued by technical problems, Donald Trump and Elon Musk discuss everything from global warming to the assassination attempt. Ukraine's military says its troops now control a thousand square kilometers of Russian territory. A BBC investigation finds that a priest who was assessed as a potential risk to children was given a six-figure payoff by the Church of England. And Banksy unveils his ninth animal artwork in as many days. This time, it's at London Zoo. 
Hello, I'm Lucy Hawkins. More on our top story now. Donald Trump spending two hours on the social media platform X in conversation with its owner Elon Musk as part of his presidential election campaign in the US. He attacked rival candidate Kamala Harris and talked about familiar themes like immigration and the cost of living. Let's speak now to our North America correspondent Tom Bateman who joins us now from Washington. Tom, a lot of the discussion is about all the technical problems there were in advance of this conversation taking place. Uh, how many people do we know actually managed to listen in and how influential do you think this conversation is going to end up being? Stay with us here on BBC News Now because the street artist Banksy has unveiled his ninth animal artwork in as many days. We'll find out what it is and where it is after the break. Trains in India will begin travelling on the world's highest single arch railway bridge. It's part of a crucial rail connectivity project that connects Indian and Mr. Kashmir with the rest of the country for the first time by rail. Nikhil Ananda reports. And uh, while we can also show you incredibly detailed and well-preserved Roman mosaics, nothing like Banksy, of course, but they've been uncovered by archaeologists in Shropshire, the Banksy of the day, found during a dig at the site of the Roxeter Roman city, which was once as large as Pompeii. It shows dolphins and fish in a pattern of red, blue and yellow tiles. Archaeologists said the mosaics would have been commissioned by someone wealthy and important. Today, a number of ruined buildings are the only remains of the city of Pompeii. Live from London, this is BBC News. In a public conversation plagued by technical problems, Elon Musk and Donald Trump discuss everything from global warming to the assassination attempt. I also heard people shout, bullets, bullets, uh, you know, get down, get down, because I, you know, I moved down pretty nicely, pretty quickly. More evacuations from Russian towns as Ukraine says it now controls a thousand square kilometers of Russian territory. A man appears in court charged with attempted murder after an 11-year-old girl was stabbed in London's Leicester Square. And Banksy unveils his ninth animal artwork in as many days, and this time it's at London Zoo. Hello, I'm Lucy Hawkins. Welcome to BBC News Now. It was a conversation delayed by technical problems, but the world's richest man eventually had a two-hour public chat with former U.S. President Donald Trump. It was broadcast on Mr. Musk's social media platform X. The discussion, which was not on camera, touched on immigration, global politics and much more. Mr. Trump also said his attempted assassination now made him more of a believer in God and was sharply critical of his presidential rival, Kamala Harris. Around the world and across the UK, this is BBC News. Welcome back. Firefighters in Greece are racing to extinguish as much of a huge wildfire as they can before an expected resurgence of high winds later on Tuesday. The blaze, which started on Sunday northeast of Athens, killed at least two people, a firefighter and a Moldovan woman in her 60s, before dropping in intensity. But smaller fires remain and many people have lost their homes or can't return to them. Like nobody else. And so there's absolutely no question that everybody here is delighted to see this small slice of history here in the capital. Harry, thanks so much and good to see the work being preserved behind Harry. Please stay with us here on BBC News Business and Sport coming up.
live from the New York Stock Exchange, now on BBC News Business Today. Opening bell. On BBC. We're going to hit the number in, in Gaza. Oh, yeah. That's the opening bell on Wall Street for Tuesday's session. U.S. investors still questioning whether the world's largest economy can weather high interest rates. Anticipation building for tomorrow's inflation report. As Home Depot forecasts a decline in its annual profits, we'll ask what it means about the health of the U.S. economy. And we'll examine what's at stake for Elon Musk as he backs a presidential candidate who's more sceptical about electric cars. Hello there. Welcome to Business Today. I'm Tyg Enright. We start with the markets in New York, where following last week's turbulence, the picture has been more mixed this week. Well, producer price rise data today is offering some clues on the progress of the Federal Reserve's thinking about interest rates. The main focus, though, of the trading week will still be on Wednesday, tomorrow, when we get the latest U.S. consumer price inflation data. Well, let's get more now from Victoria Hernandez, who's chief market strat strategist at uh, Crossmark Global Investments in Houston in Texas. Thanks for joining us today, Victoria. So that inflation report dropping tomorrow, but that producer price inflation data giving us a little bit of a hint what could be coming around the corner. What's the mood like as trading begins today in the US? Uh, that is your business today. Do stay with us here on BBC News. Hello from the BBC Sports Centre. West Ham United had signed defender Aaron Wan-Bissaka from Manchester United for 50. Very happy Jessica Bagula there. And that's all the sport for now. Back to you, Lucy. Anne-Marie, thank you. Good to see you. Now, it's a tragedy that continues to fascinate after more than a century. The Titanic hitting an iceberg and sinking in April 1912. The wreckage was only discovered in 1985, and since then, more than 5,000 artefacts have been retrieved from the bottom of the Atlantic Ocean. Many of them are kept in a warehouse in the U.S. state of Georgia. Our science editor, Rebecca Morrell, was given rare access. From Banksy's to art that is hundreds of years old, an incredibly detailed and well-preserved Roman mosaic has been uncovered by archaeologists in Shropshire. It was found during a dig at the site of Roxetus Roman City, which was once as large as Pompeii. It shows dolphins and fish in a pattern of red, blue and yellow tiles. An archaeologist said the mosaic would have been commissioned by someone who was wealthy and important. Today, a number of ruined buildings are the only remains of the city above ground. Good to have you with us here on BBC News Now. See you again tomorrow. Bye. Hello there. Tropical storm Onesta.